You are watching the Pan African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want. Unity, consciousness, our culture, our spirituality, our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home. Join my voice. Join my team. Join my campaign. Campaign 21 hashtag 1 million subscribers on the Pan African Daily TV YouTube. Be a volunteer. Apply now. Be the new Africa. So, 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 good evening, good evening, good evening, all of you that are joining this special edition today. Um, I want to salute all of you, wherever you're connecting from. I want to greet most of you that it's uh, already late in your countries where you are. Please don't worry about the images that are tripping. It's just uh, a problem of poor internet. Um, actually, and we are in the deepest times of winter out here where, you know, the connections are really not good. And so you can imagine, it's not only in Africa that we're talking about the power and low voltage. And so even in, in, in Europe or in other parts of the world where we are, so it's a global issue, isn't it? Particularly now that the world has gone digital, now that, you know, systems are actually... Uh, connected or people are connecting um, online so we can expect anything that much better one thing is very certain message um, the empowerment our programs are more more important than even just our visuals and that's our motto on the Pan-African Daily so I want to welcome all of you that are joining from the continent in the diaspora in the Americas particularly today in Brazil as you can see, our Brazilian descendants are coming up in a powerful style. And they even say, even though we are late, we're going to be the first, okay? So you see, um, I call him my boy. He's like a junior brother to me. But of course, because he calls me mama, I call him son. So Alexandra Keto is here, one of the biggest, I call the biggest visionaries, a renaissance, a child that was sent by his ancestors for a special work to humanity and to represent his roots and his race and his people all around the world. From today, you are going to know this name. And the time you put it on Google and you put it everywhere, you're going to see Things that or images that you've been seeing and wondering, how did they get here? You definitely have seen it in neighborhoods, be it in the slums, what people call in the slums, or in the inferior villages on the continent, or in the skyscrapers in New York City, or in Europe, or in Belgium, in one of the biggest art exhibition centers, Alexandra Keto has been able to take the picture of the mother Africa, the black woman, into spaces that are unimaginable. So we've been talking about Picasso and some other people. They never would be Alexandra Keto. Alexandra Keto is on mission to project the image of the African woman, the mother. All her works, all her engagement, all her beauty, everything that possesses. I, when I met Alexander, I asked, but why did you actually focus on the woman? Have an issue? How did you grow up? Why did you think, or what actually annoyed you? Were you annoyed the way an African woman or women in general or Africans or descendants were exhibited? Why did you actually get that burning passion? But as you can see, he's sitting right here in the studio. And he's going to be sharing these incredible stories with us. So changing Africa, being a voice for Africa, the renaissance of Africa. You mustn't be a scholar or anything. But if you have a gift and a passion, you have a mission to deliver. And you can do it in any way you want. You mustn't be a professor that comes here and have some degrees. You mustn't really be. You just 
bring your gift that you were sent from the creator and the universe to deliver to your people. And that's exactly what Alexander is doing with his paintings, with his murals. He has put the face of the black woman, you know, all around the globe and everywhere. So now I think we were trying to put a little bit of collection of what Alexander has been doing. You know, I have to introduce after this picture because when I relax, I just give the floor to him and he will have to tell us what annoyed him that he decided to say this nonsense has to stop. I know my mother Africa, I know the black woman is the God, is the creator. And so the world must hush and respect her in her elements and the way she is. So I want to thank you, first of all, Alexander, for being the voice and the medium of the Brazilian community, connecting back to their roots. You've been doing it for years since I know you, but now is the renaissance. And so you're going to do even more. So thank you so very much for being here, for taking that time. And it's going to be a series that we're going to be presenting. And Alexander is going to be curating all other artists that he, he has met on his journey of you know creative art and mediums that are actually expressing and giving the power to the African and the narratives of the Africa that we want. So I thank you so much, son of the ancestors, son of the descendants, son of everything that you have been made to be. So tonight is that night, Alexander. And um, I would just give him the floor. He would have to introduce, you know, talk about himself, and then we would take a look at some of the visuals, just a little bit, what we could collect, you know, for you to have an overview of what we're talking about, and then we'll get into the conversation proper, okay? So good evening okay. to you, my boy. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me in the show tonight. I know we have been talking about me coming to the show for a little while, but now finally we make it. Uh, but before anything, I just would like to say that I'm a huge fan of you and your whole family for everything they have been doing for the past years and for, and for embrace me as you embrace me as a son. And I'm always grateful and thankful for our uh, friendship and for everything that I have collaborated together. So I'm a huge fan of you and your family and everything you do you you just know you can always count on me i'm gonna always be there for all of you so thank you very much i also thank you for the warming really warm welcome um i don't know if i should say more about myself now or if you want to questions or show the pictures but uh my name is alexandre keto i'm from sao paulo brazil and i'm a visual artist but i like to call myself a creator because yes. when I say I, when I say I'm a visual artist, it's kind of putting a label where I'm a just be on that label of a visual artist. And mm. when I say I'm a cre creative, I'm more free to create what I want. For example, I produce music. I, I'm a musician. You know, I, I like I do sculpture. So I do so many things that is related to creativity. And that's how I like to call myself. I'm a creator. So I'm a creator for Sao Paulo, Brazil. And one of the missions of my work is to reconnect and value our African heritage. Because when it comes to Brazil and our history, Africans, especially the Bantu people, also Yoruba people, they helped. They helped to build my country, but they don't get the same recognition of the Portuguese people does. So for me, it's, it's a, one of my missions is to reconnect, is, is studying, reconnecting and value for African heritage. Hmm. I know um, you are a creator for sure, but you're also a teacher, remember? Because your work is not only to create, but you create and take along the kids and the whole neighborhood, everywhere you are, whether in the slums, in everything, your mm -hmm. mission has been not just to create that space, but to transfer that vision. Why? Yeah, um, I like to see myself as a tool. I'm just being used to do 
what I have to do. I'm a different too. Like all what people call is skills, I call a gift. I was gifted. I was gifted by God and what God gave me, I just share it. So that's why for me, it's so important to teach and exchange with kids because mind you, I'm a 34 years old now, but 24 years ago, I was 10 years old in my neighborhood in Sao Paulo and I had someone kind of introduce me, walk me to the art. So I realized that the same way the art had an impact and changed my life, I'm 100% sure that the art can change so many other children's life, not only Brazil, but not only in the Africa continent, not in Europe, all, all over the world. So I think that's just like, I see myself as a tool. I use my art to connect with people, to exchange with people. I'm just being used for, for a God plans, you know? Absolutely. Um, and, that, and, that helped, I, and, that's, and that's also like helped me, that's also helped me to humble myself. Because if, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm just nothing. I'm like a human being, but you know, I like, that's like also to humble myself and understand that I'm not doing art to drink champagne in a fancy gallery in Paris. I do art for the people. I need, I do art for people that think they don't need art because art is, is necessary as nourishment. We gotta eat, we gotta, we gotta have art. So. For me, it's like I do what I do for, for people, for the people that sometimes they can't even think they could have access to art. Because the art, how they teach art for us is something that only the rich people should have access to. But that's not a fact. So art is all of us as artists, like all of us create, and we gotta make sure that all the people have access to art. <laughs> Um, you would have been painting something else, isn't it? Why did you choose, uh, of course, you said it from the heritage, but why Mother Africa? Why the black woman? I think it's um, this is a long answer, right? It's going to be a long answer. So, but um, I used to draw since my childhood. So I was this type of kid that I was always messing around. I was messing around on the streets. I was messing around in the school. And the only thing, the only thing that would calm me down was drawing. And my mom, she was really smart because she realized that in my early age, and she was supporting me, giving me like pencils, crayons, papers, where I could express myself. So she, she realized that the only thing that would calm me down was drawing. So for example, if she, if she wanna clean the house, she would have given me papers because she knows that <laughs> I would leave her. I would leave her alone for hours. Like when I was a child, if I had a piece of paper and pencils, I would I would be there for hours on my own zone. Like you can forget about me. Like I would be there on my zone. So it's important to say that because again, art came into my life in a very genuine in a very simple way, it was just like a drawing. Like, let me draw here. Like, as a kid, just let me draw, right? Mm -hmm. As the years as the years passed by, um, in my neighborhood in Sao Paulo, I had a, I, I came from like a really complicated neighborhood and we had a social project that was having kids come in and teach them different, like different classes, right? And I remember I was, I think, I was like 10 years old or 11 years old. A friend of mine uh, came to my house and said like, look, I think we should go to the community center because they have hip hop class. I was like, what is hip hop? I, I had no clue what hip hop was. And I was like, I right, let's go. Like I was, I was doing nothing anyway, let's go. And when I walked into the room and I saw the guys dancing, and the music, the, the rap music, I was like, what? Like, I love it. I don't know what it is, but I, I, one thing I know is that I love it. So that's how I got into the hip hop culture. And then at the same day, they taught me that there was graffiti that you could draw 
uh, your draw or write your name on walls. I was like, wait, wait a minute. I can't do what I used to do since my childhood that is drawing, but now I can do in a different scale, like I can do on the walls. So that blew my mind. I was like, holy shit, like I have to do it. So that's how I, I kind of started to step in art and that's how I kind of step in hip hop culture. So, and one thing this is super important, it was that I grew up with so much love, like in, in my family, so much love. Mm. However, walking outside of my house, the love, was not always present inside of my house i was in love and protected but once you go out in your neighborhood in the hood it's not always that you're gonna have love right so people don't even look at you people yell at you can be rude especially especially if you're a kid from the hood right mm -hmm. but one day i was painting i remember it was a saturday i was doing graffiti and an old lady she walked by and she was like, good morning, how are you? That was the first time, that was the first time that someone acknowledged me outside of my house. That was mm -hmm. the first time. Before that, nobody even would have noticed me. I was just like a kid from the street, like don't even look, like nobody, nobody really pay attention to any kids on the street, right? Mm -hmm. And then she, and then she said like, good morning how are you i was like whoa she's talking to me i was like i'm good how are you and she said what you doing i was like yeah uh i'm doing graffiti and then from that day from that moment i understood that i could communicate and engage with the community doing art for that particular day that nobody before that day nobody even would even look at me from that day, the lady walked by and say, good morning, how are you, what you doing? I felt, for the first time, I felt important outside of my house. And I was like, yo, someone recognized me on the streets. I love that. I, I, I just love it. So, and then I was like, if that is a tool, a way of communication and engaging with the community, what do I want to say? Because if I keep writing my name, because I was writing my name back in the day, I was just writing my name like a tag. I was like, all right, cool, but if I write my name, like, what's the purpose? Like, what what the conversation I'm gonna bring it to the table? Like, what what, what I'm gonna bring it to the to the society if I just say my name? I was like, nah, let me let me think what I want to do. And mind you. I'm gonna give you the short version. This was a process, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, um, I love samba music, and samba is is African. It's black music. It's, it's mm -hmm. black Brazilian music. Come from Africa. I was like, I love samba. My mom sang, sang samba. I play different samba instruments. I love samba. I was like, all right, cool. I love rap music. I was like. And also in Brazil, we practiced the Orisha on ship that came from Yoruba people. We practiced that, right? Mm -hmm. and I was like, and I love, I love my Orishas. Like, I love samba, I love rap music, I love my Orishas. I said, like, hold on, wait a minute. All of that can, comes from one place. All of that. So I'm speaking about the Brazilian, the African Brazilian diaspora samba. I'm, I'm talking about the. Uh, African American diaspora, rap music, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about Orisha ownership. It's from Nigeria. I thought, like, hold on. There is there is one place all of this coming from, and that place is Africa. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, why we don't talk about that? Why when I go to the school, nobody even say about Africa? Like for example, it's so it's so ridiculous, but me as a Brazilian student, I learn about French Revolution, mm -hmm. but I ne but nobody even taught me about Bantu people, the Navajo. And I was like, hold on, what what is the point of me learning about French Revolution? 
if I should learn about Bantu people because Bantu people built Brazil, why I'm not learning about Yoruba people because Yoruba people had a, a huge impact in our culture. Mm -hmm. And and I come from a mixed family. I have black folks in my family. I have white fam white uh, folks in my family. I was like, is there a difference? Is there a better one? Is there a worse one? And all of that in a young age, I was like 13, 14. I was questioning all of that. I was questioning all of this. I'm like, there's something wrong. It can't be, it can't be that. Because in Brazil, unfortunately, unfortunately, the only moment that they speak about Africa in a school is just a place that provided is labor to uh, other countries. They never mention about no kingdom. They don't mention about no uh, astrology, math, nothing. Nothing, don't even like everything that comes from Africa is like bad, but everything that comes from Europe is good, right? So mind you, just let's, let's picture that. Imagine if you are um, nine years old going to school in Brazil, doesn't matter if you are white, light skin, dark skin, doesn't matter. You are kids going to the school and you open up the history book all right mm -hmm. and then you're going to see a picture of a portuguese um king in a horse right L looking nice in a horse and then you're going to see indigenous people naked and then you're going to see an african uh barefoot shirtless if you were kid, which one you want to be you want to be the one in the horse because mm -hmm. it's the hero. We like, especially boys, especially boys, we all want to be heroes growing up. We all want to be a hero, so, right? So, and then if you see a picture of someone naked, someone barefoot, and someone in a horse, you want to be the, the one in the horse. So, automatically, they start to teaching us that Europe is better than Africa. But you, you want to hear a funny thing, though. If I ask, like, I've been traveling in so many countries, right? And mm -hmm. then people say, oh, you're Brazilian? I love Brazil. Brazil. I say, like, what you love about Brazil? I love the music. I love the capoeira. I love the food. Everything that people love about Brazil is from African descent. Everything that people love, like if you if you speak nationally, or oh, sorry, for like worldwide, everything that people love or they know about Brazil is coming from Africa and mm -hmm. indigenous peoples as well. And then they say, but there's one thing I don't like about Brazil. Brazil is dangerous. Brazil, there's a lot of robberies, people be kidnapping. And then my question is, who introduced that to the Brazil? Who is that? Mm -hmm. Who began kidnapping? Who began robbery? Was not the Africans, was not the indigenous. So there's a lot of misunderstanding about our culture that let us somehow, some way, uh, respect and value more the European heritage than the indigenous, than the Africa. So answer your question is, I just look into myself, my family, what I like. And then I realized that everything that I like, everything that made my culture came from one place. And I decided to go right back to that place. <sighs> it is, you know, it, it's like you rob a child of his destiny of his roots of his future of his like you erase completely exactly. a human like you just That's erase somebody and and create your own illusion like take away everything about it, about it i mean i saw it, it in your paintings i heard it when you spoke and you just left brazil and you were angry and you just went around just painting 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 only that isn't it 
Yeah. And, and what happened is um, there's a lot of there's a lot of misunderstanding about Africa, the continent, and the media plays a huge role on letting people more confused about Africa. For example, I so many times I I I went to Africa countries, and then when I was coming back to Brazil, people was like, "Oh, were you in Africa? Is is it in danger? It's not like danger Africa." I was like. Have you ever Googled the crime rate in Sao Paulo before you ask me if Africa is danger? You know what I mean? Like people forget about their own reality. Like Sao Paulo is a danger city. How dare can you ask me if Africa is danger if you come from Sao Paulo where people die more than any war? You know what I mean? But the media portrayed and shows Africa like in a danger place tribes animals aggressive you know what i mean so and then again going back to i have so many goals and so many missions when i paint what i paint and other goal and other mission is like just to break that stereotypes that the media portray on people I go to African countries, this is beautiful. I see only beautiful people. I only see smart people speaking five, six languages, culture. That's what I see, I see beauty. So, and then when I came back and I talked to people, I was like, no, like you should, you should like, you should give a chance to really learn and understand about that continent that is, is colossal, it's huge. It's like, it's so big, it's so beautiful. Like, just give you a chance because nowadays we have access i'm telling you nowadays if you wanna you can buy a ticket and go to anywhere it's just a matter of planning it's just a matter of organizing your finances and time just go like don't like you can't be to be fooled by the media be fooled by the social media just because people as you perfectly say, they have a plan to errors people like forget about your culture, forget about your heritage. We want you to look like this. We want you to value only one side of the history. But but like we take that. Like we take that. We you know what I mean? We take that. <sighs> it it's 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 painful but you know um sometimes uh, what we do is we just say it's not our problem it is their problem for quite a long while we've been thinking we are the problem and we've been feeling victims we've been looking at ourselves and like we're not humans because they describe us like that um they dis they, they they disconnect us and and it put us against each other and stuff and for one simple reason because they want to be the only one that would have access there so if they had to project this paradise normally there would be nothing out here so they have to, yep. you know, actually like, and then we also felt like that for a long while. We bought into those narratives. We believed in them. We saw them, but you said no. Because I remember you came twice, 2014 to my festival in Tübingen and 2019, you were also there. And you, you never asked for anything, like you said. You didn't charge us for anything, even the first time when you called from Paris, from another festival, and you say, oh, can I just, and I didn't even know what, what was this all about. And you taught me even that vision to see the beauty of Africa through art. Honestly, we were just doing all the things, as, as you know, the continent is so diverse and a lot to do. But when you came and you started those paintings, the walls and people were taking pictures, and we also started like, and you really were painting just only women, as a matter of fact, India, dance, India, everything. So, yes, I want us to take a look, just a little look of uh, what Tumi Tata put as a collection of what we could get. Okay. You understand? Sometimes we can load all the pictures. It's too much. It's too heavy. And we just selected just, a little, just to give people an overview of what um, Alexander Kito and the mission that he brought for the African on the earth. So take a look, please. Let's get it.
Um, it is, thank you so much to me. Um, like I said, we had to chop them, the a collection of a lot. We just had to pick a, a little bit to give an overview of the kind of structures that you pull out there. Most of the pictures that we really could not put out were the ones in the neighborhood. You, we saw you, you know, with kids. And it, I mean, in those kind of places where people, in these mud houses where you drew, where you painted and put the mothers on it. And um, I don't know how you think, when you were doing those drawings, even on the continent and everywhere, did people, people stood and they were looking. Did they understand what you were, your mission was all about? Or they just thought, oh, you want, you want to clean their dirty houses and put a paint on it? Um, good question. And um, I think if my answer might change according to the, um, to the geographic, right? So for example, when I first started doing my characters in Brazil, people didn't really understand to what I was doing. And one thing that is important to say though, um, it's funny because we know each other for like years, but I'm not sure if I have told you this, but my characters are not we humans. They are statues and masks. So if you if you pay attention on the shape of their faces and, 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 the, and the body, it's not really like a real person. Yes, it is statues because I'm a, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of African statues. Again, in particular, the Yoruba statues I love and the Baole people from uh, Ivory Coast. Ba Baole, the Baole statues is just so fascinating to me. So that was, that's my main reference. If you look at my characters and if you take a look at the, uh, uh, a statue, you're gonna see that it's a dialogue, right? And let me tell you, let me tell you a funny story. Uh, I, I think it was because when I first came to the festival, my characters they were way more looking like statues than humans. My first time at a festival. Yes. I think uh, I I went to the festival for the first time in 2014, and I think I went to Haiti, and I don't know. 2017, something like that. I went to Haiti. This is a funny story. And I was uh, working in this particular neighborhood and I was doing my characters. I think there was like a little girl. She was like maybe seven, eight years old, something like that. And she was looking at the character and she said, I like it, but where is her hair? And I was like, there is no, there is no hair because it's, it's a statue and the statues, there is no hair. And she was all the time, she was like walking by, she was playing around and like, you know, on and on. She was like, what is the hair? What is the hair? She was all the time asking me about the hair. I was like, you know what? I don't live in this community. In a few days, I'm going to catch my flight and I'm going to go somewhere else. Is this piece, this painting right here, it's going to be more important for her than for myself. Because once I'm done, I'm going to leave. But she's, go she's going to see that, that character every single day. <laughs> and I was like, and if she asked me, she want a hair. Yes, that's my obligation. I'm going to give her a hair if she asked me for. And I was like, you know what? Let me paint it. And I painted the hair exactly like her hair. And she called, she called her mom, she called her daddy, she called like everyone from the neighborhood, like, look, this is me, this is me, this is me. And I was like, and I took a picture and I posted on my social media. And when I posted social media, people went crazy, like send me DMs, they're like, yo, it's so beautiful. And I, I like how you portrayed it with the hair. And I was like, mm -hmm. wow, it's so crazy because I was actually painting a statue. But when you see an, an a, statue, a statue, not necessarily you see a person, mm -hmm. but mo most of the African statues was using people as reference for their statues. Mm -hmm. But when you, so people see a person and saw a statue, 
but people see stature and not necessarily they see a person. And when, but when I edited the hair, people's like, yo, I see myself in the statue. Now mm -hmm. I see myself in the statue. So it's like I did it the, the, other, the other way around. I came, like, people, people they, they sculpted the statues based on people looking, hair, facial, right? And they created the statues. It's like I got the statues and I turn into persons again. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And mm -hmm. so from that, from that particular day, and I'm gonna be always thankful for that little girl. I hope I can see her again one day and tell her like how she, eight, seven, eight years old, she impacted and my work so big that changed. Like it's because of her, my work changed completely because now I had a hair, clothing, it's all because of her. So that's how I started to look like a more person, like a, a human than a character. That's a, that's a funny story that not a lot of people know, but it was because of that little girl that my work changed, you know? It's, it's, it's quite fascinating, Alex, because <laughs> when you talk about this character, you just talked about this sculpture and I look at all my, because all my house is sculpture. I mean, I, I have mm -hmm. sculptures from all over and they represent all the, our ancestors that we're talking about from all the air. And never there was a hair, <laughs> but I didn't even, yeah. I had never paid attention to it until now that you're saying that I look at all my ancestors. Yeah, they, they don't have hairs. <laughs> it was just <laughs> the way we put it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and there was after that day, all my characters uh, they have hairs now. So, and I think for me, uh, was important because look, we we have uh, we have the subject. The subject is we need a reparation, mm -hmm. right? That's the subject. We need reparation. We need to be recognized. We need to, to value the Africa, the continent. That's the subject. But we have so many ways to do this. Like, for example, you do it with a festival. You do it with a channel. We do it with connecting. Like, I know how many, how many people, even from Cameroon, that you brought into Germany to show their skills, to show their talent. Right, mm -hmm. we have people acting in the in the, in the politics. We have mm -hmm. people doing it with NGOs. We have artists. Like we all work in this huge uh, collective project, and I play my role. You play yours. Tumi play his. You know, and that's how we build it up. And for me, I think that is. I think you should have even more artists that paints and reconnect and, 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 and highlight Africa in so many different ways. Because as you say, Africa is so diverse. It's so diverse and so rich. We need like, we need like thousands and thousands of artists to portray Africa in every single way Africa has to offer to the world. So that's the particular way that I found but there's so many art, other artists in Brazil, United States, and in Haiti, in the whole diaspora, in the whole continent, in Europe, even in Asia. They are using their own voice, their own particular way to bring attention, reparation, recognition back to the continent. And I, and I don't matter like how, I don't matter if you, because people like, especially in America, people like to say light skin, dark skin. I don't, I don't care. I don't. I don't care all of that, as long as if you recognize and understand the history before we came here. Oh my God, it's um, it's so great to hear. And thank you, Cheryl is saying, great to hear, beloved. It, it, it's really, and, and this is the spirit that we are putting in this medium, just like we started with the festivals and, and I posted today and you're like, oh, so we are on again on the Renaissance in Germany. Of course, a lot of people know us now from the channel or that we're talking about here, but the most important work is the background, the work that we've been doing for the past 20, you know, 30 years that we've been on this mission 
carrying, you know, from one process to the other. Um, when you look at art today in the world and how people interpret art, I mean, you see a small, I used to ask myself, what is in this statue that the West recognized, Mona Lisa? <laughs> That's a, that's the first thing I used to sit and like a painting, weird, mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and they and they would they would sell it for billions. What is there? What is it that is the creation that makes art so different and can communicate and can represent a whole history and a race? Uh, okay. Let me think on how I could answer this question. Um, but first, as an artist, as a creator, I can't tell which work is better than the other because there was an individual person, there was a person behind every work. So I can't say like, oh, this is good, this is not good. I have my preference. I have the ones that I like better, right? Uh, and then I, I salute all the artists, all of them. It doesn't matter how and what you paint, I salute you. But um, we artists, we, ha we have a big role in a society, but it's not all of, the, all of us that understood that. Mm -hmm. Because mind you, a um, hundred years from now, people are gonna look at my work and try to understand what was happening now, right? So when we go back to pictures, when we go back to the paintings, it's just representing what was happening at that time, right? So, and when it comes to um, a lot of these uh, handsome artists, we know that who was behind them financially. We all know, right? Do mm -hmm. I have to say that's the church or not? Like, no. And, all right, cool. So, and the church and the kingdom, they have their own interest in on have or hiring this artist to paint what they wanted to see. That's why Jesus looks a little different now, right? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So we have an important role in a society because we are painting and representing what's happening right now, right? And because they always had a, this plan to change the narrative and say like only them are the best ones only them are the best ones and when i say them i don't need to be more clear right i think we all know who we're talking about right so because they wanted they wanted to be the ones perfect they wanted to be the ones who had the truth the one who find out about medicine about math they hired just artists to paint what they wanted that's why there's so many artists that they painted they painted what they wanted but they have some message subliminal message behind the paints to tell the, the the truth right but the difference is now is that we we just don't care we paint what we want that's that's why hip-hop is so important for this he this new generation of artists because hip-hop taught us that we can do what we want like we don't care like we don't like we don't need like we don't need to we don't even need to go to college and learn about all your Henderson artists because we can create our own art we can do because we've been doing this for years right so it's a very dedicated question i could speak so much more about it but one thing that's important me as an artist i'm going to never say which art is better than the other i have my own preference but one thing that we need to see and think is that artists we are hired to paint and back in the days who hired who had a waste money to commission these artists they have their own interest in. again that's why jesus look is a little bit different nowadays right so the difference now is just because we pay what we wanted and we're gonna keep doing that so 100 years from now on people will look at these pictures and say oh okay there's a new story oh there's the same story but being being told in a different way you know what i mean Whew.
this is deep um because like you said creator it is creating the space of what is the reality of what people should see if you're influenced by money or you bring your gift to design it and to put the picture of what people should see and so you do recognize the fact that pictures are very important to tell a story of a people absolutely 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 but but the difference is that i'm not being commissioned by the church no more sure or it's not it's not it's not any king from germany that's commissioned me it's not any king came from england now it's like we are commissioning each other now we got it we just building up i mean i'm not gonna lie the gallery is still running by you know people who who not necessarily like and appreciate what we bring to the table but look, we have social media. If we use the social media in the right way, we're good. Yes. I'm not saying it is still a lot of struggle. It's like we still got a lot. There are still a lot of things that we have to do. There's so many things we still got to do, but we we working on. Like we're not sleeping on. We working, and people are con be be connected. Be people being doing great work, because sometimes also like when it comes again to social media, and media they're gonna always play the bad things and show the bad things happening in the world. They never showed about your festival, but your festival is a beautiful thing that be connecting people. All of that to say that, don't get fooled by the media all the time. There's a lot of good things happening in the world. There's so many good things happening in the world. It's just a matter of you um, looking for it. The same way nobody, like look, nobody at school could teach me about Africa. I started going to the library and looking for books. I was like, I want to I wanna see a different thing. I want to see a different story. Until I was blessed to travel to the continent. And when I went, I, my, first, my first African country that I visited was Senegal, which I love. Like Senegal is, is in my heart. So like I love Senegal. But when I go to African countries, I go to the national museums. I go to all national museums because right there, I can find the, the history that has been told for us right talking to the elders you know what i mean not actually not even talking listening because sometimes we got to learn not to talk and listen so go to the go back to the continent and listen to the elders they will tell you what's happening they will tell you the story so when i travel to different african countries i go there to learn other fun facts so many people so many people go to the African countries with the idea to help them. I don't go to African countries to help them. I go there to help myself. I go there to help myself to understand <laughs> what nobody has told me. I go there to learn. I go to African countries to learn. I don't help nobody. Who am I to help someone? I'm nobody. I go there to learn. And with everything that I learned, I process in my head and I give back in my work. I go there to learn. Ain't nobody going to Africa to help African people. We go there to help ourselves because once you help yourself, so you, you understand the injustice. You know what I mean? You don't need much to understand the injustice that happens in the continent. We don't need much to understand the injustice that happens in Brazil is the same system, has been the same system for years and years and years. We know, we already know how the system works. What, what are we waiting to change? We'll be waiting like, we have more tools. We have way more tools now than before. It's just a matter if we really wanna do it. Let's, let's do it. Like, let's do it. We gotta do it. You know what I mean? We gotta tell a different story now. Like for example, this channel, we are telling our story now. I don't know, I can't have access. I don't know how many people is watching us, but all these people that are watching us now, they have access to our story. Like it's us, like we're talking, like it's us. Like we don't need to uh, be on uh, BBC. You know what I mean? Like we have our channel, we have our people because at the end of the day, who watches BBC is, 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 is us. Who buy, who buy, I'm not gonna say no famous name, but who buy the famous uh, soda? We know the, the, more, the most famous soda, that started with the C. 
Why we don't have our own sodas? That's how we got to do it. That's one thing that in America, they do it really well. They start to building up their own brands and support it. We have channels, we have brands, we have, we, we are the ones who create. We are the ones who create. Don't, 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 I can't, I can't think that a gallery in Paris will determine my career. I can't. The gallery that I have a contract with is black owned galleries. I don't need to know gal gallery in Paris like waiting for a white old man tell me that my work is beautiful because I know my work is beautiful. I don't need, I don't need him to tell me what I know. And the difference also is like, now we know, we know. You can tell whatever. It's gonna hurt us. It's gonna, you know, it's, some, it's an injustice, but we know, we know. And again, we gotta support each other in a different way, like in a whole different way. You know what I mean? And one of the diaspora, when America, United States and Brazil, the diaspora's present in Brazil, in America, connect because we have the language barrier. It's not all the Brazilians that speak English, and it's not all the Americans that speak Portuguese, but when the diasporas connect and go back and understand, ain't nobody can stop us. Ain't nobody can stop us. It's the same thing, like the same thing that I said about Brazil, right? When we when we talk about Brazilian culture, Brazilian culture is African culture. Sorry, but it's African culture. And again, if you take all the the rap music in America, all the athletes. NBA, or if you take all of them, remove all the black folks, if you remove all the black folks from America, what's America? What's fun about America? What is, nothing, nothing. So who, who make that? It's us, like we make, the, we make the movement, we are the movement. We are the movement, they need us. We don't really need them, but the way how the, the, the society is, is made, is to give you this fake, this false impression that we need them. Come on, like, yeah, we, we bring so, so much substantial to the table. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm laughing because I know you. <laughs> I know you so much and that's why you know if if if, if i was hosting you like an other guests that i never have known them i really would be I'm, my, I'm just smiling so much because uh i'm happy that they, i'm happy that thousands of people are watching you and they get to feel what i feel when i met you and and the contribution that you have put out there and the message without saying anything and you stay so humble you've met the biggest of the biggest we just showed only one picture where where usher you know our brother usher the artist actually recognized you at this monument and like yes brother this is the way we have to go and you've met all of the top ones but you are always the most humble and the most simple I mean, when we come, we meet in Germany, we sleep on the floor, we cook together, we build the festival, we clean, we do everything. People come, they enjoy the dance and go, even the big ones. But we are the, always the ones that will clean and do things and, and get so tired and sleep, sleep even when we're driving. You know, and <laughs> this kind of connect, I mean, it, it, is, it is impossible to describe it, Alex. Isn't it? Because that's the thing. But the thing is, I'm nobody by myself. I'm nobody by myself. Like, again, I'm, I, I just do. One thing that I like to say is like, we, and I would like everyone who is watching us now, pay really attention to what I'm gonna say now. We have to find our abundance. Once we find our abundance, we must share. Yes. Don't get, don't get twisted trying to find other people's abundance. I found mine. My abundance is create. Once I found it, I must share. If every single person who is watching us right now, if they keep honest with themselves and say like, what, what do I like? What is my skills? No, think about no money. No, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about what you love. 
what is your skill? Once you ask your, that question, you're going to find your abundance. Once you find your abundance, share it because the abundance is what God gave us. Don't waste time. Don't waste time to find the, the job that's gonna make you rich. Because richness has absolutely nothing to do with the money. You know what I mean? Find it, find your abundance. Like what what I do the best, what I do the what comes naturally. Because the drawing came naturally. Like I was four years old, I was drawing, it was naturally coming from my hands, right? Once you find your abundance, you must share. So my abundance is creativity. Is drawing. I have to share. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. If if I don't have uses of saying like, oh, Kato is great, I will not be great. I'm just great because you are great. I'm just great because you say I'm great, right? So if you, and a lot of artists they don't understand that because they really think they are better and superior. But if it, if I don't have people liking my work and then understanding my vision. I'm just nobody. So that's why we got to keep humble. We got to keep in like all this mainstream uh, that never sh shine my eyes. You know what I mean? What shine my eyes is authenticity, being yourself, just be honest. Because that one thing I can tell you, people going to love what you do if you be authentic. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care if it's like a, a soup, a rice. I don't care. If you make your rice authentic with love, people are gonna taste your rice and say, look, this rice is delicious. I don't care what you do, but just do with passion. They're like, you know what I mean? And you got people gonna feel it. So I think when the people see my work, people can feel it because I'm honest. I'm being honest when I'm creating, when I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm studying, when I'm listening, I'm gonna be honest, and that's that's uh, how people can. And people are gonna feel it if you keep if you keep it honest. People are gonna feel it, and there's nothing else you can say or do. People are gonna feel it. Another topic that has been very um, challenging um, is our artifacts in this Western museums. I mean, this this is one of the topic that we're saying. Um, we have to meet in Germany this year before we go to Senegal in December. Somehow we have to meet here. And um, I know the, it was uh, yesterday when we when I talked about this, there was a kind of a misunderstanding about it. But we have to address these issues, like you said. And that was the point. We have to go to the museums. We have the biggest museum in Berlin that is keeping... I don't know whether trillions in worth and value of African artifacts. They have even our queen mothers from villages and counties in the con in, on the continent trapped up in these museums and chained. I call them chained. They've been raped in the fact that they open people pay money. When people pay money, come into the museum where you 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 exhibit this art. It's a kind of a rape. It's a queen mother, so they, call, they call her Dengonso. Dengonso is the queen mother of the Tikari people of the Sok tribe in Cameroon. And Gonso has been in Berlin for decades. It's a queen mother. We know also a statue that was taken into the Americas. Also from this side, onto that, that, that artifacts, that ancestors started disturbing the whole museum and they had to bring it back to its origin. So sometimes also, like you, I'm saying like a creator, I felt when we sit and only complain and say, oh, our ancestors are there, without us really going there, you know, to cast this spell away to say, we are here, this is our artifact, you know, we talk to them, we sit down on the table with ourselves, and break all the spells. We cannot just be going ahead and always talking from the top. Oh, they did this to us without us really confronting this reality. What do you think about that? It's a do. Oh, this is um, it's um. There's so many things I could talk about this uh, particular topic, but I think it's one thing because their excuse is gonna be like, oh, it's protected here. That's that's their excuse, right? Oh, we 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 have all these artifacts here because. 
uh, we are protecting them. But you, you show like the stolen art, right? Yes. I think, uh, I truly believe, I truly believe in the diaspora going back to the continent. For example, I have so many, like I have so many uh, friends who are Africans, but is studying in Europe. So they have an access to the studies. And, but I think whatever you're learning in Europe or United States, please apply it in, in your home, in your home country, like in your country, right? Because we need to, uh, all this access that we are having outside, we sh must return to the continent. Because if we don't return to the continent, it's not them who's going to return it. Yes. Because when, when we think that, we are giving them the power again to return. What I'm trying to say is that, again, we can, we can approach this subject with so many different ways. But the way that I decided to approach now is that we got to return so then we can get things back. Because if we are not returning, they won't. They won't. We want to say what I'm saying. So we need like people who are doing art and investing in, in, in back in the country. For example, Kahine Wiley is an American artist and he has his studios in Senegal. So he's building back the community, the art back in Senegal. Of course, there's art in Senegal, but I'm just saying one person who is bringing back Mm -hmm. One artist who, be, who belongs to the diaspora, but it brings it back. That will give a different vision, a different perspective, and people is going to bring it back. And then one day, Senegalese people will say, like, you know what? We need all our back. But I, I truly believe we also have the power to, to restart that, bring it back. But what I'm saying is that if we don't bring it back, they won't. We got to do it. We got to, like go back, back like the diaspora gotta go back and and, and create this bridge that has been missing and then one day they gotta understand that they gotta give it back what they stole you know it is um and it is also a duty like i said um i i i feel like they then like they were they stole them and they chained them and Absolutely, it, yeah. it, it's still like this enslavement we, when we look at us and we think that we are free we're not free because our ancestors are not free because our art is not free it is still chained it is still being monetized just like any of us is being done and so but 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 i feel the spirit like they're crying up to us like you just watch us like this and we locked somewhere and we looked somewhere and nobody's saying anything, you know, like, like the spirits are really talking and talking to us and we can see it. And um, it, 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 we have to go back. Yes. But we're not leaving our ancestors back. We're taking everything with us and we have to start the journey of doing that. I'm not saying that we're going to need to go and open and take it now, but we have to start. We have to start somewhere. Yes. We cannot always be cleaning I, people's mess all the time. We have to start. We're not leaving any of a single of our ancestors anywhere. We're taking everything with us. I think, I think it's, um, we already started. There's so many people already doing it, but I think we need to connect it more and, and highlight people more than one who's doing it, right? uh we already started we doing we do uh, as i say like we are the movement we are the ones doing it. we just need to talk more we need to connect more because yes. all what they do all what they do is to divide us putting us names labels categories just let's keep doing what we're doing and talk more connect more i think it is it's, it's extremely important absolutely Alex, what would it be like, you know, you're talking about now we are in the Renaissance. 
and we we know that a lot of artists they are the creators they do want to 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 change this paradigm in its own sector what is it that you would advise us to do more you already talked about cutting on on the different aspects of what we do music for instance dance uh, we have to revolutionize every part of the renaissance isn't it every piece and parcel should I, be singing I think, the opportunity. I think we gotta fully understand that we are the movement we are we are the one who's making everything cool everything that look cool is we make it we making it we just need to like truly understand that and take ownership of our things i think we're doing we are on the way we just need to connect more uh create our, our own brains more our own channels more talk more you know what I mean? I think we, we are doing what, what, what we're supposed to. And then mind you, there's so many, I, there's so many visual artists in America, in Brazil, in my hometown, in Sao Paulo. I, I couldn't name a thousand of great artists doing great things. We just need to talk more with them. We got to highlight them more. You know what I mean? It's just like we, we, are the, we are the machine. We are the movement. We are. Um, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's very impossible to talk about this uh, subject matter of art without talking also, uh, you know, in last time we did this project in, in Tübingen, we actually designed the slave ship inside this gold center in representing through pictures and through the action. I mean, what impact do you really think? Created. We know the feedbacks and everything that happened in people that into pictures and stuff like that. But we wanted to show the African child that was brought here, its history, and how it was like feeling, feeling like sitting on that ship and then suddenly, you know, taken to another line, isn't it? Um, could, you, could you please repeat because you were breaking up? I couldn't, I couldn't really understand what you're saying. Yes, I talked about the project that we did in, in Germany um, 2019, you know, where you build okay. this and then you put the African children that are born here into that ship for them to get that feeling of the ancestors just sitting on the ship and taken to another, you know, to another place that was not their own. I mean... Mm -hmm. We connect the action to also the pictures, isn't it? Yes, I think I think it's uh, again me as an artist, me as a creative. I need to think about creative ways to make people understand and recognize our heritage and see things with a with a different perspective, right? So boats, boats in general. Uh, I use a lot of it in my, in my work, in my creation, and I think it's um, something that uh, I truly believe is, is a part of what we do. And I think that particular was, was a way how the children, how the kids could see themselves in the boat, but they were happy, they were dancing, they were playing. So they were, it, it was like not in a sad way, not talking about a colonization, just like we in the boat celebrating and bringing the joy, the happiness. So I think it's, it's again, me as a creative, I gotta use different ways to tell, to take the narrative and tell the story in a different way. That's basically, mm -hmm. that's the same thing when, when, I, paint, when I painted the character, I, uh, we showed here, uh, Tumi showed here in the screen is that instead of having the child in the back the woman had a, the whole world because africa gave birth to the entire world so it's just like it's me using creative ways to tell people like look if there is no africa there's no world so correct and this is this is me like me again like i gotta i gotta explore and, and use the different tools ways where people can understand the message because the message we all know is there, but how I can use different ways to let them know because sometimes people can like even myself, if I read a book, 
I don't understand. I need to listen. I'm a listener, right? So there's some people it's more visual. So there's some people that if you explain, if you talk verbally, they won't understand. But if they see a picture, they will understand, right? So every person, they have their own way of how they understand things. Again, if I read a book, I, can, I don't understand. But if you tell me a story, I got it. So for me, because I work with the visuals, I need to explore different ways to tell what the book told, what the, what the elders told, but in a different way. You know what I mean? And that way, I think more people can have access and, and understand. Because sometimes you can't, sometimes if you see a picture, you, not, you don't connect with the picture. But if you see a different picture about the same subject, you might feel connected. So that's why it's important, again, to have so many different artists painting because we're gonna uh, connect with different folks. And in the end of the day, more people will understand what we are talking about. We're gonna understand what is uh, the message that we're trying to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So, Alex, are you looking? Are you looking on going back? I know the project, but I just want you to, to share here because 2019, you broke out this vision of the new Africa and Mother Africa being pregnant. You know, to deliver this. So an artist is not just painting future. How did you come to that vision, to be honest with you? Um, I, and I'm uh, being honest with you, I don't think much before I create. I just feel the energy. And that energy was present in a festival. It was not me. So in that particular piece, just see, just see me as a, a printer machine. And I just printed the image that was present in a festival. I didn't, honestly, like, I didn't came out with a sketch. I didn't think much. I was just there, present, and I saw it. So that was, that was my vision about the festival. That was my vision about you. That was my vision about your family. That was my vision about every single person that was present in, in the festival, to be honest with you. I didn't think much. It was just me being present. It is. Yeah, you didn't think much, but it happened. It was 2019, August. And you yes. said the new Africa. Or, and you said, Susan, you're pregnant. And, and you're going to give birth to a new Africa. I mean, Professor exactly. Kian, Obama, all of them that were there, the, the, the guests that were there for the African conference, they all took the, those image. And suddenly, in, in 2020, Judge Floyd and, oh, mama, oh, mama, and now we are seeing the new Africa. It, it, it's amazing. I think we, I truly believe that we are on the way. You know, and I think yeah, it would be nice uh, for everyone who's watching here. Maybe we can share this picture again. Maybe not right now. Maybe you can share uh, on a, on I a would, course. I would do it. Yes, I'll do it because the issue now, like I said, we couldn't even load most of the picture, but I'm putting really all the collections that we did, even the ones in the shape and even the videos, the short videos, even the one that you were learning Swahili, you know, with the other artists from Tanzania that also came yeah. for the exhibition. I mean, I have them all. I'm, I'm going to do a reporting about it this week and I will upload it for people to, you know, to follow up the conversation. Right. Yes. And, and, and also, uh, I'm going to take the chance. Um, Right here, wait, hold on. Right here is my name. Uh, if anybody wants to follow me on my socials media, just type yes. my name and then people can see more what I'm working on. Uh, and uh, also I always post about the, the, the festivals that I'm on, uh, the projects that I'm working on. So, you know, if anybody wants to uh, know more about my art, please feel free to um, um, find me on, on my social media. Yes, just type Alexandra Keto as it's here right away on Facebook. <laughs> you see all the projects that we're talking about and wherever he's been painting. And um, he always wants to paint where the attention is. And he's always painting Mother Africa on all these walls and carrying it along with him. So it's a wonderful um, 
gift that you are to us and remember we talked about the project rallying the artists for the for, for this renaissance that was coming that we didn't even know we just thought we were doing a project like we usually did and we had artists from other countries that uh, came together but this time i think you see already the vision isn't it so what is it that we're going to do more wow um I think we we just need to see the art not only as art but a, a, a important role in a society and how we're gonna portray ourselves how we're gonna tell the story right because again we are res responsible from a hundred years from now people will see what I painted with so many other artists painting so we are not only artists we are responsible to tell a story and we got to bring more artists to understand that because we are responsible we are responsible for telling a story so just see the art not only as a, not only the visuals but the power that we have as an artist because there's so many artists they don't know that so you know what we could have a panel with artists and talk because like we as an artist we got to learn how we can um support ourselves financially how we can manage our career because you know anybody can just take advantage of the artist because we gotta eat so i think it would be interesting if you could do a panel on where, where we could talk about how the artist could develop their skills and their career because that's something that we can learn there's no place we can learn about it even if you go to college they will teach you how you can manage your career there's so many like details that we could share and and talk to other artists i think like i think like so many i'm i'm, I'm sure there's artists watching us right now that right. they might have so many questions they, they might have so many questions of how can i get there how can I get there? So, and there's so many things that I might share that might be helpful. There's so many other experience from other artists that they, they if they share, it might be um, important. Because in the end of the day, like we learn a lot of things that we don't really, we learn by ourselves. And I'm, look, I'm, and you know me, I'm, I'm 100% free and open to share in exchange so why we don't do a, like a panel or, or, or where we artists can talk not only politicians not only about correct government but mm. let's have like I, I know i know there's so many musicians that can teach different artists like look that's how i built up my career and maybe listening to other artists that make it they might they might um we might say something they're gonna click different in their minds and they're gonna get it we gotta and again we don't need um i know there's a lot of institutes that is helping people but we they hire us to do the job why we just don't do the job ourselves let's let's have a panel let's talk I know so many artists that I'm sure like they would like to, like, they would like to ask me questions and you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm open. Like ask me a question if I know. And even like, I look, I help so many artists. There are so many artists that, they, that I help that I, they call me like, Kato, how can I do this? What you, would you advise? I can't, I kind of be a mentor for a lot of them and say like, look, I did it this way. I don't know if what I did would help you, but that's how I did it. And I think you could do this, 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 because if we don't take care of our, our own, nobody will. And again, I'm, I'm gonna make myself available and free for any artist who wanna reach out to me and ask me any questions. I'm, I'm here. Let's, let's exchange more. Like, let's make more accessible to other artists, to other people. You know, I think that's something we could bring different to this year's festival is, is especially because we were two years in lock in. We got yeah. 
feel more each other. We got to touch each other. We got to feel more each other. So let's do something where people can like generally like touching and ask how, how, how's the process of a gallery? Because nobody told me how is the process of the gallery. I had to learn it by my own. And I had so many better experiences with other galleries. But now I'm, I'm, I'm with the gallery that I like. But I had so many other galleries that I didn't like. But nobody taught me nothing. But now I had an experience. How can I share this experience with other artists that are is still in the process of beginning something? Let's share our experience. You know, let's share. I think that's something that we could do more often, maybe. I think it would people I think people would benefit more because look, people would be more benefit more than visuals, but information. Because at the end of the day, that's what we are lacking of information. You know what I mean? Let's talk. Let's spend the whole day. Let's spend the whole weekend. Talk to artists. We can do conference call. You know what I mean? I, I, I can't be in Germany. I can be in Brazil. I can be anywhere. Let's make a conference call where we can host a thousand of artists from all over the world where we all can right. exchange, where they, where they can take notes, like art students. There's so many artists students that they are kind of lost because they don't know which path they should follow. Mm. They don't know. You know what I mean? And I think that I think me and so many other artists, there's so much to share with people who are like beginning, you know? And again, I'm, you know me, like people who's watching me, they don't really know me, but you know me, you know how I am. Like I'm, I'm always down to whatever. Let's do it. Let's make it. I know. You know? I know, I know. Yes, we have to connect more and we are on the topic of, I heard somebody say, Alexa, I have a picture I would like you to paint, okay, you see? So, um, art is of the gift from the creator, particularly to the African. Just like we say we created the world, we design everything. But the one area for us Africans that I think, I don't know, it's ignorant or disrespectful or never put an, um, an attention to it is art. It is easy for me to go and pick a handbag or a pair of shoes or a cloth than to pick an art piece that particularly is my history. And so we can talk about, oh, let's read books when scholars come here. Let's read books, you know, let's go back to, to uh, but nobody is really talking about Let's look at the representation of art and what does art actually mean in our life. So imagine if we were taught, not even taught, if we actually pushed this and put it also like one of the focus, like we talk about leadership, we talk about um, uh, music, we talk about food, we talk about fashion and brands and that. If we talk about creative art and the African child would draw or paint his story or even represent his own image or her image, so probably will not be looking too much like want to be somebody else. So that art is actually a part of what we're talking about, the education of ourselves. If I can paint an yes. image like the little girl who said, I don't see my hair. I want to see my big hair. I want to see my kinky. I want to see my locks. I want to see my braid. Where is it, Alexander? And that was a misrepresentative because he could not identify himself. So conversations like art, we see people travel all around, like you said, the reach to buy a piece of art. They put the focus on art. So why do we, spiritual people, people that this, even this essence was given to us, we don't pay attention to it. It is for this reason that we think every Wednesday, we're going to have art talk. And our art talk is actually the unity and the creativity. So next Wednesday, we're gonna have a, a young artist from uh, Cameron. I also met him just on Facebook because I saw his work like, um, and I shared it with you, Alexander, and you said, wow, this is beautiful. What I, I like- I, I, I was, I was uh, excuse me. I, I was just about to ask you if it was the one who you shared with, with me. He's amazing. <laughs> He's amazing. You know what is so amazing about it, just like you, this is street art that we're talking about. These are children on the street. These are young boys and girls that are fleeing the war zone and into other streets, but they are sleeping on the streets. 
and suddenly they paint such a beautiful piece they never went to school to learn how to paint but they paint their stories and their history and the black person and his history it was it's so amazing so these are gods these are the creation these are the creators that we need and it is part of who we are so on wednesday we're going to bring his name is called kayaman art if you also look at his homepage, you can already see some of the on facebook some of the pieces that has been but he's sleeping on the streets in douala when i spoke to him he showed me uh, a place that he made of cartons he's sleeping on one and he's putting it's raining on him it's and then i said why are you on the street then he said because the street is also a part of my history and my journey and my life why must i sit only in the comfort zone the street is also a place to exist you know and we exchange this perspective sometimes we think that like you said oh people who are like that they are poor but they enjoy that space and they make the best out of it and if we can start understanding that thing then we understand truly who we are so next week wednesday we're gonna have a kayaman art and then like you said you're gonna be bringing orders so wednesday is art talk and education and connecting there yeah, over to you all right great i'm looking forward to it so you did share some of his work and i was like that's amazing now i'm i'm quite sure like an artist like him I'm sure he has so many questions like how how can I improve my skills? How can I yes. make my work where people can see it? So I think we we here, we're here to support each other, we're here to share, to exchange. I'm really looking forward to whatever I can contribute to that. I'm on it. Beautiful. Thank you so very much. And it's also, like you said, the art business. We're going to put everything, arts and economy, arts and development, arts and business, arts and creativity, arts for, for us, arts as history, arts as everything, right? I, I, can, also, um, I can also ask the, the, the gallery owners, my, the, the gallery that represents me in New York, the uh, Black-owned gallery. I mm -hmm. can ask you if they, they would be interested to participate in one of the editions because they are a gallery. They can also give a lot of tips and a lot of advice to young artists that they are looking for, for a, a, a space. So I can also uh, talk to them. I think it would be beautiful if you could also have a, a host, a gallery owner to explain more about how gallery works. I think that would be something where people would be really interested um you know to to um here absolutely that that is a must particularly when we know that our art are in those galleries how do we get them out so it's also only an art gallery that can tell us the secret behind it and why they keep it and how we are going to get back our ancestors back to us there's a lot of talent on the street of Africa. There's a lot of talent in the streets in the communities where we all are Africans are creators, Africa a God. We are the co-creators of the universe. But now recognizing our God is seeing ourselves in them. And art could just be one of those very interesting, even though it's a difficult topic. If we were talking about leadership and governance and corruption and, and whatever thing, I mean, there, there would be another kind of a feeling. But you see, some of the things that are actually us and the things that we've been running away from and these things, we want to bring it into our existence. How we see, if we go like on the continent in Africa, you see most of the art gallery are German, French, cultural centers, and they take the paintings yep. of our artists and they have to paint according to their taste. Even the theater, the drama that they do, they have to do it from their own perspective, the stories that they do. Because this whole sector of art is truly the creator, the way we are. And that's why we created the world. Whether you want it yeah. to look beautiful or the dance or the poetry or the music or, or the designs and everything, it's all a creative creativity or creation, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's, uh, that's again one of my missions that's what we gotta do we definitely gotta do this more and more and art is art is something that is soft we can talk about a heavy subject but in a soft way where people can connect more you know what i mean yes. so i think it's, it's this, this is a beautiful thing about art is that we can talk about really heavy subjects 
but in a way where people feel it in a different way and they can understand better. Again, I like to say that we all work in a big project, a big collective project. Every role played in this big project is important. There's no the right or the wrong way because we are working a very big collective project. I like that. I like that. <laughs> we are a whole full package. There's no wrong, there's no right, and that's what art does. Art doesn't see wrongs or right. They just see the whole spirituality, the collective, the oneness, the one goal, the one vision. Yeah. And that's what we are. We want to see ourselves as the one Africa for Africans worldwide. The big picture of who we are in our small, small pieces. And I want to thank you, Alex, for that, uh, for that, for that statement. That was very strong. We have to see yourself as the collective. So good, fine. Uh, we are rounding up today. And please, what is the last thing that you want to advise us? I know we're having Kayaman Art uh, next week. If you, if you, if your chance, I know you're very busy. You could also join him like uh, on on the show. He's a little bit kind of shy. He's very young, <laughs> and so you can be that. You also saw the other sons that we also had the street children, the dancer like uh, uh, Fabrice, you know, and his art and talent and dance and stuff like that, isn't it? Nice, nice. Um, if I have to say a last thing is that is um is is exactly what I was saying earlier is that. I want everyone who's watching here, just be honest with yourself and find your abundance. Because once you find your abundance, you find what God gave you. And once you find it, share it with the people. We got to share more. We got to exchange more. So that's the, the thing that I have to say. Um, also, I would like to thank you very much for having me in the show. Uh, I truly appreciate it. And, um, you know, anytime, at any anytime you need me, I'm on it. I'm gonna always be working with all of you, your you and your beautiful family that I love so much. I'm always here for you, and um, I hope everyone who's watching it uh, appreciate it, enjoy our conversation. That's my my name right here on Instagram, Facebook, and my social media. If you wanna follow shot me a, a dm ask me any questions i'm going to be more than um happy to um to talk to all of y'all all right thank you very much peace and blessings to you alexander keto and greetings to mom yeah and and, and that we're still going to do that samba thing <laughs> we're going to we're still 100%. going to <laughs> We're still going to dance in that music group. So thank you for being here. It was a pleasure. And thanks everyone that has been a part of this conversation. Like we say, Wednesdays is going to be our art talk. And um, we see us next time, Alex. Okay? All right. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Good night. So, have a bye. yeah, tomorrow we're going to have a Professor Baena Bello. And we're going to talk about a topic uh, that we already announced here. The role of the women the role of the women in the liberation and the freedom movement and uh, that's also going to be another series that we're going to be uh, connecting on more often and also to connect the role of motherhood in our family and in this essence of our unity you know in this family atmosphere i want to thank all of you that have been here I know it's the first conversation on art talk and um, we were not able to actually represent these pictures and these images, like I said before, connection and, and uploads and stuff like that. When they become heavy and then the internet start kicking us out. But it was a pleasure. And like we say, you can follow Alexander on his social media space or we're still gonna put a collection of his paintings. And so join us tomorrow, same time with Professor Baena Bello and let's get this conversation and this unity going. Thank you so very much. Good night to all of us. We see us tomorrow. Bye. You are watching the Pan-African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want. Unity. Consciousness. Our culture. 
our spirituality, our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home. Join my voice. Join my team. Join my campaign. Campaign 21 hashtag 1 million subscribers on the Pan-African Daily TV YouTube. Be a volunteer. Apply now. Be the new Africa.